Hello and welcome to episode 79 of the Made of the Own podcast. Um, my name is V and I do apologise for not being here last week. Um, I had a visitor from Wednesday to Sunday. She left really early Sunday morning, um, like half past six. Um, it's a story. <laughs> but I just didn't feel like, even though she wasn't here here, Again, um, there was a music festival in town from Thursday to Saturday and uh, I've been a couple of years but I just wasn't into the lineup uh, this year. It just seemed there was too far between the really good acts that meant you'd just be at the um, Dublida festival for a lot of hours waiting for the next concert. Uh, well, the next concert you wanted to to uh, go to. So I didn't really feel like spending 1700 kroner on that. Um, but my friend has a much more diverse taste in music than I do, so she, she did go. Um, and she did have fun, but she did agree that it was the weakest um, line-up they've had in years, so there is that. Um, so that meant when I came back from work she wasn't here, but it's like, there's this person here who isn't really here, and it just threw me off a bit. And to be honest, I had a setback. And I'll show you the setback in just a tiny bit. Um, yeah. So, just didn't feel like recording last week. Uh, that happens, and I'm sorry. Um, going two weeks before, well, yeah, two weeks before recording does mean that I have something finished. Um, let's start out with that. Also, I'm not sure about this location. It might be because I shouldn't have worn a white top. I feel like I'm sort of floating head and arms on white. Um, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Anyway, I should turn this right side out. Sorry. Hang on. Do -do 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 -do. Ta da! It's a finished object. And it's still wet. Um, we're recording inside today because it's really damp outside. It rained all afternoon yesterday and I don't know if, if you're hearing the, the voices outside. Sorry if you are. Um, that's not... <sighs> this is such a mess but <clears throat> we'll power through um, and yeah. This, I haven't clipped the ends yet, they're still hanging around. This is the test knit I did for Duvigan. Shack Mulligan or Mulligan Shack? Um, sorry, I can never remember. Um, it is due today, I think. So I got this in before the deadline. Let me just... Um, it's a bit more purplish in real life and it has this really sweet um, flowery detail on the yoke. Oh, sorry. And yeah, um, I knit this with two strands of a fingering, well, fingering-ish. Um, cotton linen blend um, that I got from Carnosel years ago um, and I measured uh, out 10 meters of it, I think it was 10 meters, to see what the meterage was and it doesn't match the one they have for cotton linen blend so I had to invent my own listing, um, only I didn't, I just put in what my actual yardage was um, for 100 grams 
and this is 400 uh, 475 grams and I was going to look up what that meant for stash dash um, how many meters that was because this is my first finished object for stash dash I know it started May 25th and it's now June 17th almost a month later this is the first thing I finished but it's something and I think it's if I remember correctly it's 300 something meters per hundred gram so you know decent yardage I passed the first go I think there's a 1k in there isn't there um, so yeah need to take photos um, hopefully it'll dry it won't dry in time I'll have to take photos trying not to look like hmm, this is wet it's not wet it, it's damp it's damp let's go with damp but yeah a finished object I did I did modify the pattern a bit um, well modified I shortened it simply because I was running out of yarn and there was some serious yarn chicken going on at the end so I was hoping some of it would go out would that would be longer in wash um, it wasn't but it'll it's it's a nice length to wear with like a high waisted skirt or something which is something I do own so I think that's yeah it'll be good it'll be good it'd be great for weather like this where it's sunny and then sunny and warm ish warmish <laughs> and then it rains but it's still warmish so you don't want a whole lot of clothes on anyway that's my fo the next one is the one that I had a bit of a snafu with last week and let me tell you why oh and the other one as I said it's a test net it's due today it's called Blooming Meadow um, and I don't know when it'll be released but just be aware the other one I did first off I did debate finish it waiting to record until I finish this because I'm so close, you guys. I'm so close. I just, yeah, that sounded wrong. Um, and it's my Levina, which looks tiny. It looks absolutely tiny, but because it's lace, it'll stretch in all directions. Um, and. As you can see, I'm on the neck opening and literally I just need to do a few more rows of stockinette and then the edging, which is a um, garter edging, and I'm done. Oh, and I need to sew the alarms, which I think might just be just a three needle bind off. Um, my snafu. I, last week I was just short of hair um, and was ready to do the stockinette or to switch into stockinette. Um, I had my little sleeves. Uh, you don't really see my little sleeves. My little sleeves are a little bigger than they were last time. You see, I was knitting this and I haven't gone very far thinking the lace looks wrong. It looks more squished and not at all like the body. Um, the smart person, <laughs> which wasn't me, as you can tell, the smart person would have checked the chart, discovered that, oh, I'm doing this completely wrong, and stopped knitting and think back to, well, think, ripped back to the underarm bit. I wasn't the smart person. I was the person who kept going and going and going and in the end thought because 
because I kept thinking it'll block out. It's just because it's come so tight uh, around here and the other one's been stretched and I had so many excuses. Yeah, so I had to rip back all of this and start over because I was doing just one stockinette round or plain knit round between the um, lace rounds. That's not how you're supposed to do it. This is peacock lace. <sighs> yeah. So I ripped back. I did for one second contemplate not doing redoing the sleeves but just doing the wrong the wrong lace pattern all the way up the sleeve for one second and then I thought no it'll annoy me it'll look completely weird um, and it'll just annoy me um, so I had to redo the sleeves and since I was actually doing the right um, thing this time around of course it meant that I had more rows so I had to it ended up being longer so yeah I as I mentioned I did contemplate just waiting to record until it was done but I figured no this is usually around the time when I record or well it's a little bit later than when I record usually and it felt a bit like cheating so I made a deal with myself, I'll be honest, show you where I've gone to and then I'll have a finished update for next time. Who doesn't love that? Oh and uh, as I said, this is Livina by Laura Show, who is Cosmic Pluto on Instagram and I think that's her designer name as well. Or I don't mean the sign of name, I mean, what do I mean? Rivalry name? Yeah, that's what I mean. And the yarn is Stan Schnuppe from uh, Volmeiser, it's the Merino DK. I think this is the third skein. Pretty sure. Or is it the second part of the second skein? Because I had to... There was a knot in the middle. Um, don't remember. Wearing it will show what it is. <laughs> but yeah. Really excited to be done with that because it'll be a great piece again for these cooler but not really cold uh, days. Which is also why I opted for the shorter sleeves. Um, the lace part is just me. Uh, it's a plain stockinette sleeve in the pattern. Um, I need it to be extra. Anyway, that's all my knitting. Um, I do... I have the tiniest bit of sew. It's embarrassingly a tiny bit. Um, but... I put myself with enough needles that I wanted to show you. So this is, oh, I have a gold thread hanging out. Let me see, do, and there it is. This is the front piece of my dress that I'm blanking on right now. It's a deer and doe pattern, it's cardamom, it's cardamom. And this is the front bodice piece. Uh, literally, all I did was um, sew the top part together with the bottom part, adding this piping. And oh, I, I did a bit of gathering, which wasn't really that elegant uh, around here. So it lays nicer. Um, yeah, that's all I did. 
And I need this done, well, before Friday because it needs a wash as well. Um, because I'm using orange chalk um, on this. This Kimsa fabric with the gold cherries. Um, and this just feels so light and summery and we have the summer party at work on Friday and that's what I'm sewing this for and I really need to get a work on because uh, it's Sunday today. It doesn't have a whole lot of pieces, I think this is the most, well not complicated but the most um, finicky. It. Um, that's not the word I, I was searching for, but yeah, it takes a bit of skill, finger skill to get all of this matching and work at, worked out, um, not least because I've actually sized up the pattern, so this, uh, it's not completely average. So, but that's down to me and my, well, I want to say laziness because I didn't, that's not lazy, I just didn't do as many points of reference as I could have. It's not lazy, it's just not as meticulous. So, I have, I have a plan. Hear me out. I have a plan. I am going to finish the <clears throat> the vena, which as I said it's just the neck and the underarms and weaving in of the stitch uh, ends. Then I'm going to do the next step on this which is the smoking uh, on the bodies front and back. In the pattern they do it each side before putting it all together, um, which I've never done before. And I have a blubber machine so there's a, you have to take out the under thread bobbin holder to get it to sit right and then put it back in um, to get the right tension on the elastic. <clears throat> so, I've been putting that off a bit, not because it's complicated to do, it's just, that's an extra step. So, my plan is, do that, do at least the smocking on this, both front and back. I think the ne next part is probably assembling the skirt. Well, not assembling the skirt, but... Adding the pockets to the skirt. Yeah, that would be it. I'm going to do the the uh, fronts of that. And I did have a thought uh, yesterday when I was doing the piping on this. This is just going to be a the armholes are just going to be finished with um, not piping, but with um, a grow brain, a ribbon, a ribbon, um, to finish off the edges nicely. Why can't that be done using the piping? So it'll be piping here and on the back of course, piping around, this gold piping around the sleeve edges. Um, which does mean that here at the shoulder it'd be piping close to piping but, hmm, and piping on the pocket because it's um, not an insert pocket but you know it does a pocket bag and you see so you'll see the piping on the pocket edge I mean would the sleeves be too much? Again, this is one of the things that uh, Charlotte won't be able to see this in time, most likely. Well, I'm not doing the sleeves or oh, the armholes today, so she might. 
so I'll have to consult her. I might have to do a mock-up um, without sewing it down to see for myself what it looks like when I get that far. Um, but yeah, it's not that I enjoy sewing with this or doing this piping. It just, I just thought, well, wouldn't it look kind of cool? We're ways off from that, so we shall wait and see what I think when I see it mocked up. But yeah, do that. Smoking's here. And then I get to start on my next knitting project. I know I still have my, um, my slip slide splash socks that two pairs that I need to finish um, and I will pull them back out because now I'm out of deadline knitting so it's easier to, for me to diversify and do more things at once whereas this week I've been really I need to finish this test knit um, because I was lazy and started to late and didn't work on it but I'm just going to lean over here hi um, but I, my reward for doing that is this. This is the Summerlin Dye Works. Yeah. Uh, teal fade. And it's missing a color because I'm not using the last color. But this is what it's going to be. And I chose this version because I'm using the darker color as the um lace color like here so yeah um this is strike it's uh, a caitlin oh what's your name caitlin something caitlin hunter of boiling knits um it's one of her patterns and i'm doing it as a fade but with and but no I'm doing it, the main colour as a fade. Um, I should have enough of this. Uh, if not, I'm sure I can find something else to work with. It. Plus, I'm not doing long sleeves, so that should work out too. And then this as the contrast colour. So the contrast will be something around here. I know this is light colour on white, on white, on. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that's my reward for doing the other things will be that I get to cast this on. Um, because I like to reward myself, <laughs> uh, don't we all? And I feel like I'm more motivated if I, if I uh, reward myself. So there's that. One last thing, and this is so out of my comfort zone uh, but again Charlotte um, we we communicate almost daily so of course she gets mentioned a lot but um, she did a French feedback copycat thing but with a embroidery on cross stitch on the outside and I, when she started it I'd already admired it and thought it was so cute I don't do cross stitch I've never done cross stitch um, hmm. there was that I, I think I mean I look at other people doing the frosted pumpkin stitchery patterns and all the things and think they're so cute but hmm, I don't I've never done cross stitch um, and then she showed this little bird, and it's so cute. And then she put it on a bag, and it was so cute. And it just so happens that the person who designed uh, this cross stitch actually has a shop here in town. So I went down, and I could have bought half the shop because there were cat pillows, there were cows, there were all kinds of really cute things. Um, I was like, ah. 
I wanted a wall. I don't know how to call them a cross stitch. So I got the bird that she showed, which was this one. Isn't he cute? And all of these, these are Pils Espo. And all of these um, birds, there are three in the series, soon to be four. They are by, well, she designed them as they appeared in her garden. And when I was in there, she was, she was showing me the fourth one that will, kid that will come out, because this is a kid. Uh, the fourth kid will be the blackbird. And the funny thing is, someone, I think it's Trin. Trin. Pretty sure it's Trin. Uh, had bought these and mentioned on the same day that, oh, she really wishes there would be a blackbird. There will be, in late August, there will be a blackbird kit. And I said, I'll, I'll be back for it. Um, because by then I might have stitched at least one of these. I did start, and I'm showing you this one, because this is the one I started on. You can't tell. Um, keep in mind, this is my first ever cross stitch. Um, and this is all I've managed so far. It's not re really impressive. Um, this was my first test bit, this one. So it's really uneven and the crosses aren't even going in the same direction. But I think I'm getting better. I mean, this looks better, right? Um, the back is... Not as tidy as I would have wanted, but, you know, I do try to keep it tidy. Um, right now I'm just going across the lines because I'm, I'm thinking that that will make more sense to me to work across or back and forth. Um, and the kit comes with two needles, so actually I have four needles because I have two kits. Um, so I can just load each needle with a different colour, which is what I've done right now, only I've run out of the uh, darker colour, so the needle is just sitting here unused. Um, I will say that when I'm doing this, I keep thinking, or remembering, or thinking I'm remembering, that someone has a snap-on thing, magnetic, where you can just put your needle on that you're not using. That seems clever. That would be so much easier than poking it through. Might have to find out if that's a thing. But yeah, that's everything for this week. Um, and it does seem to me like nothing. But at the same time, it does seem like a lot. A lot of words. So, I promise I will see you next week. Um, <laughs> I hope you have a great time. Bye.